What is up guys? Old friends, new friends, soon to be friends. Hope you're having a good day today. Today we're going to be going over my thrift finds for the past few weeks. I've been hitting thrift stores up uh, pretty recently um, and I've found a few cameras, some goodies, and I figured I'd show you guys. Um, a lot of them, if you follow me on Instagram, shameless plug, <laughs> you know what some of these are. Um, but I figured I'd make a big video and compile my thoughts. If I have taken a test roll on them, I'll show you the photos when I'm talking about it, and I'll just go over them real quick. A lot of these are low-key point-and-shoots that you can get for pretty cheap online, or you find the thrift like I did. So. <sighs> Let's get to it. Also, this is empty. I thought it'd be cool for dramatic effects. There's no cameras in here. They're on my bed. I'm also gonna include the prices I paid, just so you guys, you know, have a better understanding. Um, and then if I forget, I'll put it somewhere down here. But you'll know. Let's get to it. You should basically just call me the Olympus Whisperer because I found so many Olympus point shoots in the thrifts. So I'll go through all those first, and then I'll go through the other ones. We got the Olympus Stylus Epic 170. So basically, you have clamshell design like the other Olympus styluses. You have a 38 to 170 lens, hence the Stylus Epic 170. You have this little knob on the top. Zoom in and out. You got this little pop up flash. Overall, it's a pretty cool camera. Um, it's super thick compared to the other Stylus Epics, um, but it works great. Stylus Epics are great starter cameras if you can find them for cheap. It has everything you could want in it, you know, auto winds, auto everything, flash, timer, zoom, it's all weather. Um, there was a roll of film left by the people before me when I picked this up. I developed it and you can see you got some Christmas photos from 2006. Figured that out by looking up the Hesh truck. Also, I forgot to say, I paid five bucks for this guy. So, yeah, now I gotta uh, go ship it out. Next camera we got is the Olympus Infinity Zoom 80. Uh, so I like this camera a lot, actually. Um, I just like how it's like a little brick. It's square and I like that the flash doesn't pop up like a lot of the other Olympus cameras um, so it's just one less thing that you know won't break um, but you know clamshell design like the other ones um, photos came out really well yeah just a cool camera uh, you can get these online for like 50 to 80 bucks I found mine for five dollars from the thrift store um, but it's just a cool cam. And it takes really good pictures, so can't beat that. Next cam we got is the Olympus Infinity Stylus Zoom 115. But yeah, this is uh, like a normal Olympus clamshell, pop up flash, all the goodies, autofocus, weatherproof. It says one in there because I had to. Put a roll of film in for it to turn on. Pretty good camera. This one has a little ding right there, but it doesn't affect anything. And I got this camera for four dollars. So you can't beat that. Right along, we have yet another Olympus. Not a stylus this time, though. Um, more of like a disposable, reusable, a reusable disposable. Uh, it is the Trip XB3. It was $3.99. I saw it, I thought it looked cool, so I just bought it. There's not much to this camera. You can't control the shutter speed or the aperture. It's fixed. I don't know what it's fixed at, but what's different about this versus normal disposables 
you have a little protection for your lens and then you have automatic flash and then it advances and winds your film for you which is pretty cool so if you like the look of disposable cameras um, this is just a step above um, yeah I mean, it works great as the date thing that batteries are dead on that and I don't feel like fixing that because I never use it but look how big this viewfinder is I don't know if it's gonna work but this thing is freaking huge I don't know I thought it looked cool um, I might try it out I don't know yet but again four bucks there was a roll film in it so I was like alright let's just get it <laughs> All right, back to the stylus cameras. We have an Olympus stylus zoom. This one I actually bought at a, an estate sale. Um, I went there one morning and this was hiding in the corner with the box and everything. Uh, the lady had no idea how much it was worth. Uh, I didn't know if it works. I didn't know a battery, but it looked in good condition. I told her, you know, uh, 30 bucks and she said, sure. So I figured this was going to be the only good find for the day. So I was like, whatever, $30. I'm still ahead of the game. I'm definitely going to keep this. I just finished my test roll. So the uh, photos probably won't be in this video. But it's just a nice 35 to 70 zoom. I don't really zoom much on these. So I don't need the crazy like 170, 115 zoom. 70 is definitely enough for me. Um, but yeah, pop a flash, everything works just fine. But yeah, definitely a cool camera. Definitely will be keeping this one. So after I went to that estate sale, I decided to hit up the thrift stores that were close by. And um, I kind of played myself for buying uh, that camera for $30 because uh, I walked into the thrift store and I immediately saw this on the shelf. This, for those who don't know, is the Olympus uh, Infinity Stylus Epic, or in other parts of the world, known as the Mew 2. Awesome clamshell design. You have a 35mm 2.8 lens, which is so tiny. This camera is so small. Um, you got flash, crazy fast autofocus, weatherproof, all the bells and whistles of the other ones. Uh, no zoom, but it's okay because... You don't need it. This thing is insane. Uh, I mean, you probably know if you're watching this video how sought after these cameras are. Uh, they go for like three to four hundred dollars on eBay now, um, which is wild. And I got this for you ready? You ready for it? I got this for four ninety nine. If you don't believe me, I'll put up the picture that I took when I got it right uh, here. Uh, yeah, five bucks. I, I freaked out. I was hanging around the case that the camera was in, like a vulture, until someone came to uh, take it out for me. Um, yeah, I was like, yo, this is crazy. Uh, I'm definitely going to be keeping this camera, uh, and I can't wait to shoot it more. I did a test roll, and everything came out awesome. It had a weird uh, advancing issue. Like, some of my frames are overlapped, but I heard that's just what happens when you don't use the camera in a while, so hopefully that'll go away on its own. But yeah, this was probably my greatest thrift find. Last Olympus camera I have, uh, well, I don't actually have it anymore, uh, was the Olympus Infinity Stylus Zoom 120. The names are ridiculously long. I sold that one already. Uh, one of my last few YouTube videos, I made a full review on it, so if you want to check that out, uh, you can. I'll put a little video of it in here. That was a great camera. I highly recommend that camera. Um, Probably my favorite out of the bunch of the other uh, stylus zooms that I had. Uh, that one was really nice. I got that one for eight dollars. Yeah, got that one for eight bucks. So now that we're done with the Olympus cameras, let's get into the other ones. Here we got a Fujifilm Discovery Zoom 270. I found this camera at an estate sale right down the street from me. It was five bucks, so I couldn't pass it up. I also found a Marilyn Manson t-shirt from the 90s that I got for three dollars and I ended up selling for like 300. So that was kind of cool. Um, 
But yeah, this camera is actually really nice. Uh, I had a lot of fun with it. You have a 35 to 70 zoom, autofocus, all that good stuff, good flash. Uh, you have a frame counter, you have a timer, all that good stuff. And what's cool about this camera actually is um, it has drop-in loading. So the back just opens like that and you slide the film in from the bottom with the spool, with the reel out, and then you close it and uh, it does what it's gotta do. Another cool thing about this is that it has a uh, panoramic mode and it's not like the like an actual panoramic mode. It kind of just puts two black strips over the negative. Um, so you kind of lose uh, your negative, uh, you know, if you look at it that way, but it's fun to play around with. Um, yeah, I, I think this is a great camera. Uh, I had another one of these uh, and I got rid of it, but I'm definitely gonna keep this one because I don't know, it's just a cool little point and shoot to bring around. Next up is my one Goodwill find. Uh, and if you don't know this, uh, for the most part, Goodwill has found out about uh, film cameras going up in price. And instead of keeping them on the shelves, uh, they sell them uh, at auction now. So it's really hard to find uh, cameras that are like good or worth it at Goodwill now. Most of them are broken, all the ones that I found. But I found this Canon Sure Shot, or uh, it's also the AF35. So I was super excited to find this camera uh, at Goodwill because I've always wanted one, um, but I don't feel like spending the money. I, I still, I overpaid for this one. It was like $14. Um, and then I got it home and it doesn't work. So um, yeah, it would have been a great camera. You have a 3828 um, sharp lens. I've seen people take amazing photos with these. Uh, but sadly mine has like a short circuit in there if I put batteries in it just like heats up like crazy um, So yeah, I guess I'll probably just sell this for parts But definitely a cool camera if you can find one that's actually working um, Which is you know why I don't really go to Goodwill's anymore for this kind of stuff another camera that uh, I Wouldn't say I overpaid for it, but I probably could have found one for cheaper But I just thought it was so cool and that is the Pentax IQ Zoom 60. Picked up this camera at a second Ave thrift store. Uh, it was 15 bucks, but I just thought it was so unique looking that I bought it. Uh, the battery ended up being like 20 bucks, which was uh, a little ridiculous. So I don't know if it was worth it. No, well, it was. It was definitely worth it. This camera is pretty unique. You have the on button back here. You just flip this switch. There you go. And then it was actually cool, if you can sort of focus, you have a little screen here, and when you zoom in, it actually tells you the exact reading of your focal length, which is cool. It's loud, obviously, you can hear it. Um, and what's another cool thing about this camera is that the top, it's actually like this one big panel. So you have the zoom, and then you have the shutter uh, all in one little panel and um, the shutter actually feels really nice to use uh, But yeah, the images on this thing actually really surprised me. They came out great. You have a uh, 38 to 60 lens. I'm not sure the aperture on this one um, But yeah, definitely some cool shots uh, I was happy with the results if you find one of these for a good price definitely snag them up this camera also has um a macro mode which is cool so it automatically zooms in to 60 for you and then when if you get super close up to focusing it actually zooms in a little more and lowers the minimum focus distance so you can get some macro shots uh, on this thing which is pretty cool so like I was saying that the Pentax uh, wasn't too big um, I have this behemoth <laughs> Uh, this thing is very large for a point and shoot. This is the Minolta Freedom Zoom 90, and this is one of the first editions of it. Um, I bought this for $10. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, it came with a big bag, and I thought that was kind of cool. Um, and it just looked fun, so I bought it. You have a switch on the side. 
opens her up. And then if you want the flash, you press this again and it pops up and your focus is on here right next to the shutter, which is kind of cool. Um, and then another cool thing is when you zoom in, the flash actually lifts with the zoom. So on this, you got a 38 to 90. It also says macro. Don't know if that's true. I haven't really shot it. Um, you have pretty, pretty giant just brick. You have a program zoom mode. Um, and basically what happens is if you focus on something and it thinks that it should be zoomed in, it'll zoom in for you. Um, I guess that's kind of cool and unique. Um, I don't know. I definitely am not going to be keeping this because it's so big. Uh, but I thought it was just like a fun, unique camera to, to try out. Carrying on with the Minolta theme, we got a... Minolta Freedom Zoom 150. So obviously comparing this to the last Freedom Zoom, this thing is way smaller. About the same size, I'd say, um, like length and height-wise as the Stylus Epic or Mewtwo. Um, but this thing is just a cool little pocketable, you know, go on a trip point-and-shoot camera. This is like the epitome of, you know, early 2000s point-and-shoot cameras for moms and dads. You have all your readings up here. You got your flash buttons, your timers, your date modes, all on the back, nicely aligned. It tells you if you're gonna use flash and focus, like all the other point shoots. Your zoom buttons are right here. Thing zooms out pretty far. You have a 37.5 to 150. Why is it 37.5? I have no idea. Um, but my girlfriend actually had this camera. Uh, we have another one, uh, and she has been using it. And uh, yeah, you gets great photos for how tiny the camera is. I have no complaints about this thing. I, I don't need two, so I'll be getting rid of this. I paid, I think, five bucks as well. The one cam, the one thrift store I go to, almost all the cameras are five dollars. I paid five bucks for this. Um, I'll probably sell this one, but yeah, definitely a cool little, cool little cam. And to end off the Minolta's, I just picked this one up yesterday. Uh, you have a Minolta Traveler Freedom Zoom. I found one local thrift store that we have in my town, and it's uh, raises money for the hospital. Um, and I, I just happened to come across this camera, which is a pretty cool looking Minolta. Uh, it is a, another Freedom Zoom, but this one is a Traveler. I'm not really sure. Uh, I'm believing it's one of the like a 90s, late 90s edition. Um, you know, you have the autofocus. You have your little screen. You have your flash, your timer. You have your zoom. And this one is a 38 to 90 mil lens. Yeah, you have your quartz date imprinting on the back. You have your rewind. Uh, pretty just simple camera. What I thought was cool about this, and I found this after the fact, um, this one actually comes with the little remote. So if you want to take selfies or group photos, uh, you have a two second timer or you have just the shutter button here um, to take, you know, photos uh, of yourself and, or anybody else, which is, I thought was pretty cool. I still have the tag on this sucker. I paid $8 for this. Uh, I think it was worth it. I'm pretty excited to try this camera out. We got one last point and shoot for you. Uh, and this one is probably the most unique in my opinion. Um, it's the Argus AF Zoom 150. So I found this camera at a second half with the other Olympus that I showed you guys. It was whoop, four bucks as well. And what I just thought was so cool about it is I've never seen an Argus point and shoot like this before. I always see the plastic, you know, basically disposable cameras. Um, I've never seen an actual, like, functioning electronic uh, point and shoot. 
Uh, so I had to buy this. You have your on switch up here. Here the flash power and on. These buttons, you have your power, you have your rewind, you have a macro mode, which I'm not really sure how that works, uh, but it's pretty cool how the button lights up. You then have uh, your timer, your flash, and you have your different modes that it points to uh, for the different styles of photos or flash that you're gonna be using. You have your shutter button, and then you have your zoom, and you're dealing with a 38 to 115 macro lens. I have not used this camera yet, um, but I, I'm actually really excited to use it. I think it looks so cool. Uh, I only saw one other one on eBay, and it was like 20 bucks. So, I mean, you might if you want it, then I'd go out and get it, because 20 bucks is not bad. But yeah, retractable lens, covers everything up. Uh, I'm definitely excited to shoot this guy. Can't beat four bucks. All right, so the last two things I got, not point and shoots. I got one lens and I got an SLR. Um, I found this Canon FD 518 uh, at a thrift store, obviously. Um, I paid $2 for it. Uh, it had no price. Um, I asked the kid how much at the register. He was like, I don't know, uh, it's a lens, right? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, I don't know, two bucks. And I was like, yeah, deal. Has the original packaging for it. Slide it open. You got some styrofoam. And then you got the lens. Uh, there's not too much to talk about. I mean, everybody knows this is like the lens that comes on every Canon AE-1 to ever exist. Um, but I actually only have the 51.4 for my A1. Uh, so I figured I'd give this 1.8 a little test and then, you know, sell it for a good price to someone who, who needs one. But yeah, everything seems to work on it. No fungus or anything. I mean, I just $2, you really can't pass that up. So yeah, bang, bang. And finally, uh, my last thrift pickup for this video, we have a Nikon FM10. Uh, I've never been a Nikon guy. Uh, I'm a Canon family. <laughs> so I didn't know much about Nikons. I saw this at the thrift for 30 bucks. Uh, I asked my buddy, he said, oh my God, you know, that was my first film camera. I ever had and used uh, he's like definitely worth $30 so I picked it up the thing is in mint condition shot a roll film through it already and everything came out great it came with the bottom part only of this leather case uh, but I'm fine with that the the rubber underneath just like all the old rubber for other cameras is kind of getting a little sticky so having this on there is you know nice yeah it came with the kit lens which is not focusing but it came with the kit lens 35 to 70 35 to 48 uh, definitely not the sharpest lens or anything not the craziest lens but it was cool that it came with it I know these are selling for like 150 plus on eBay um, my buddy wants it so I think I'm gonna sell it to him but yeah 30 bucks so yeah guys, that's basically it. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If there's any of these cameras that you want me to make a more in-depth review on or overview to show sample photos, let me know. Um, also, comment down below what your best thrift or garage sale or estate sale or whatever your best camera find was. Uh, I'd love to, to hear about it because I think it's so cool that you can find these cameras for so cheap uh, at these places when people are spending ridiculous amounts uh, on eBay. You just got to put the time in, got to put the work in, and you can get the deals. So anyway, uh, you know, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.